I have to click something. All right. Okay. Hello again. Um, uh, maybe in the beginning, uh, just to let you know, I will um, record this meeting today, but um, only the audio track. So you will not be seen. But if you speak to me directly, uh, you will be heard. But if you don't want that at all, you can, of course, write me in the chat. Otherwise, your uh, voice might be on on YouTube. <clears throat> All right. Um, apart from that, I guess there's not much to say. So all there is is what seems to be happening. And this too for no one. So in the end, no one knows anything actually really, because what is is just blindly itself, so to speak. There is no real awareness that would really know what's going on. And there is no real consciousness and all those things. In that sense, sitting in front of a screen is just blindly itself. It's natural, it's ordinary, but for no one. So there's no realization. There's also no realization of this message, so to speak, in case one says there is a message. There is no realization of what's being said, because what's being said, so to speak, apparently is just a description of this. It's just an apparent description of what sitting in front of a screen is and what thinking is and what feeling is. It's no thing, can't be known, isn't experienced already. What this actually is, isn't experienced. And there is no one experiencing a this in the first place. This is not a this, so to speak. All right, as this is everything, there is no teaching around. This can't be achieved. This can't be um, reached. There isn't anyone separate. There is no one to speak to. There is no message. Okay, for anyone who just joined, um, the audio track is being recorded today, just to let you know. <clears throat> you know, you can have the thing say it, like when you log on, every time it says this meeting is being recorded or something like that. Yeah, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, it is. Ah, okay. So yeah, maybe I have a look. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Yeah, people should know, I think. Okay, question. You often say that this message doesn't make any sense. However, it does seem to make perfect sense to what apparently happens here. It seems to be so obvious the non-experience of centerlessness and then periods of apparent longing for that. There's nothing that can or needs to be done. The setup is completely exposed as there is real gratitude for that simplicity. All right, lovely, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, when I say it doesn't make sense, I think often that's a bit mixed up. Um, it doesn't make sense in a way that it can be understood or stuff like that, but there can be just an, an instantaneous yes to this. And in that sense, one could say it makes perfect sense. There's just an apparent recognition of this message, so to speak, or what's apparently pointed to. But it doesn't make sense in a way that it can be comprehended or understood or stuff like that. In that sense, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but yes, I, there can be an, 
as I said, an instantaneous nodding, an instantaneous recognition, which is not anyone's. But when I said this is all there is, it's no thing, it's whole and complete. There can be kind of a, an apparent yes. <laughs> it's always difficult with the yes thing. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, also when I say it's unknown or unknowable, it basically refers to this, this illusion of I am, which thinks that knowing is experiencing or that I can experience it and know it and own it and understand it. I mean, what we speak about here is very natural and ordinary. It's so ordinary, it's actually not worth talking about it. Because it's this. Okay, question. How can wholeness choose to prefer no experience over experience for itself? I understand no one makes a decision, but it seems like a bad decision. <laughs> well, well, it only seems, well, it only seems uh, like a bad decision seen from the person, of course, which would always prefer to be alive. Yes, but as I say, nothing decides really. And I mean, it's it's not not real anyway, those two, so to speak, as if those were two opposites, me, no me, and, if it, and as if someone can choose between those. Oh, no, those two don't exist. There is no choosing going on. There aren't two states or there aren't many states and there isn't a switching between states. No, no, it's just timelessly whole. Whatever, whatever there seems to be happening, it's just timelessly whole. Okay, question. The strategies, yeah, the strategies for temporary fulfillment have completely dried up here. So that when the longing comes, there is absolutely nothing that can be done. It seems to be experienced in its bare, uprooted rawness. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, in a way, all the attempts to find fulfillment, I mean, that's a way of seeing it, are rather the distraction from that longing. So when the tools don't work anymore, so to speak, to distract oneself or to run away, there can be just longing. Which, which would be what apparently happens and it would be naturally whole, of course, and it doesn't need an answer. It's just itself. Yeah. <laughs> the me longs? Well, it, yes, but not as a conscious process, but me is separation is automatically the longing to become whole. They, this seems to be together, so to speak. You can't separate it really, the longing from being someone. Absolutely. And that's the thing, liberation in that sense, if, it doesn't matter liberation, but liberation in that sense wouldn't be the, the, the answering of that longing that would, what the person would hope for, that my longing can be answered by finding something, by becoming fulfilled. But in a way, when it turns out that this me is illusory, the longing becomes illusory too. They go together. It's just a falling away of them. Without ever becoming fulfilled, without ever being answered really. Okay, question. How come nothing can be known when the experience is known to be there? Yes, but that exactly is the dream. Experiencing that knows itself. Awareness that knows itself. Uh, nothing knows itself. Not even that. 
nothing knows the experience to be here except the experience which believes to know itself. But it's, it's an apparent, it's dreamt. I'm here, I'm, I experience myself, is the dreamt reality. Oh no, it's not known. That's why I sometimes say there is no illusion in the first place, because who would be there to know it? Who would be there to make the differentiation and say, oh, oh what? that's the illusion. It does not exist. There is no illusion in that sense. Hi, Andreas. Hello. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Fantastic. Um, so basically, there's a few things going through my mind at the moment. When I've heard some of your introductions, when I first started listening like on these meetings, you would basically say you're not a teacher, you're not a guru, and you don't want people to follow you. Uh, yes. And then on the, uh, whenever I last spoke to you and I was saying that I basically realised, oh, we had the weekend meeting, didn't we? So I was saying that I realised me and you were the same, there's no actual difference. Yes. In my mind, I was kind of saying to myself, you're going to offend him by calling him not special. <laughs> But then what I'm kind of realizing now is the whole idea for you, I've just seen something from Joey. Morning to Joey and his girlfriend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that. But no, basically the whole idea for you uh, of people worshipping you or putting you on a pedestal, it, it would be completely like absurd, wouldn't it? Oh, it, it, absolutely. Oh, of course. It's totally absurd. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because it's uh, in, in that sense that you have nothing to give them, they there's nothing they need. And it would, it, I don't know if it's, this is your case, but it could almost be uncomfortable for you if people are kind of going, you know, we worship you, we want to get what you've got. Oh, would, uh, yes. In the story, one could say it's very uncomfortable. Yes. But the character of Andreas. One could say so, yes. And where I've kind of paralleled this to myself is for like obviously how many years I was going out to the nightclubs every night to meet women and I basically wanted them to worship me. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot, and believe it or not, lots of them did. <laughs> that's, that's the direct path into hell. <laughs> <laughs> but now it would like, obviously I haven't been to a nightclub in a while because we're in lockdown. But the idea of a woman worshipping, like, it seems so absurd that someone could worship me as special. Uh, yes, oh, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, as, it's as absurd as with me, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm even not... a bit more absurd. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> not fully convinced Andreas I think maybe you're a bit special but we don't need to worship you at least <laughs> well though I'm very special I don't need to be worshipped so. fantastic I love listening to it thank you lovely thanks <laughs> okay <laughs> question I could never get my head around the idea that so-called reality could be defined as anything at all, let alone consciousness. To me, that sounded like an omnipotent sentience or godlike force and therefore meaningful or purposeful, which just seemed like an imagination. Oh yes, that's basically what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I liked the idea of there's something being meaningful and godlike and absolute and stuff like that. I was hoping for that <laughs> until it dropped. <clears throat> okay, Quinn, I was always looking up to the people who were much cooler about that. Okay, experience doesn't know itself what it is but experience does know it is there. So some knowing is going. Yes, but, but this knowing is illusory. I know what you mean, but uh, that's what can't be understood really. That seen from the person, it feels right. Seen from, uh, true, seen from the person, this knowing 
it, it is like, it can't go beyond that. The person can't go beyond experiencing itself. So for the person, this is the final truth. I am. It can kind of doubt everything. It can doubt thoughts and feelings and, and um, awareness, what it's aware of, but it can't really doubt this sense of I am and I know that I am. It's impossible to go beyond that. But what this message is saying or what turns out is that even that which feels so solid and real and true is just nothing at all. So the, the knowledge about oneself wasn't, wasn't solid and real as well. But that's the point which can't be explained anymore. The person can take this as a belief or the person can say, hmm, okay, maybe he's right, maybe not. But from one's own experience, which only says I'm real, this doesn't make sense. It's a useless information, so to speak. That's why I say, so when you say, so some knowing is going on, one could say, apparently, there seems to be the illusion of knowing. But no one knows that either. It's not another thing that can be known or understood. Yes. Even the knowing of illusion isn't real. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's already within the story. Yes. Yeah, totally. Andreas, so I know this is maybe a bit obvious, but it's just for clarification. You say that in regards to this message and quote unquote liberation, you have nothing that we haven't got, or there's nothing there that's missing here. Absolutely, yes. But I'm that's the person. case. <laughs> but that's the case everywhere in quote unquote life, not just with liberation, like, oh, Andreas has got this thing called liberation. We're missing liberation. We need to get liberation. It's also like, you know, when you meet a person or you're talking to someone in your friends or one of your family, well, for me anyway, there's always that narrative of comparison. Okay, so how, what have I got that they haven't got? What have they got that I need? Hmm. But that's dreamt, that's as dreamt as saying Andreas has liberation and we need- Absolutely, to yes, yes. Or, so, or one could say, it, it, it's not that the things they seem to have turn them into a happy person like someone having more money or whatever. That's what seems to be happening, but this doesn't give them anything. And that's the same with feeling. Well, I know you said it about feeling. Yeah, with everything. Oh, absolutely. Oh, with completely just, everything. Obviously for however many, I don't know, maybe 20 years or however long I had depression, well, whatever anxiety, I don't know what all of it was. And then I could look at something like my brother, who from my perspective is usually in a very good mood. He makes everyone laugh. Um, you know, you, he, at school he was very popular. I was like one of the shy kids and stuff like that. Uh, but to say he's got more than me because he feels happy more frequently or like has more good emotions, it doesn't give, yeah, we've just yeah, said that. Exactly. Give... Absolutely, yes, there isn't anyone. Yeah, it's empty, it's all empty. Oh, <sighs> oh yes. No one's in a, a better or worse position, so to speak, because the position is dreamt. It's exactly the position which is the illusion. And also for someone to be in a position and for that to be real, it would need real time, wouldn't it? Well, they, this all goes together, position, time, space. I am now here is taking on a position that's that's positioning oneself already. It, absolutely. But even to say they have something. Oh, oh yeah. Something you're, saying, you're saying now here, that's where I'm getting confused because I'm thinking to have something, you need to be able to hold it and carry it with you. But if there's no time, you can't hold on to it. But you're saying it's not even 
anything's not even had in the first place. Uh, yes, absolutely. Only because it's part of the dream to have emotions, to have money, to have thoughts is the dream. No one owns anything. There aren't things long, to be owned. There aren't things. But as long as there's an apparent person there, they will always feel they have something. Like they'll take ownership of everything that ha apparently happens. Yes. At least their, their own life. That's the least thing you have, my presence. But usually they think they have much more, yes. Yeah, but whatever's apparently happening, we think it's as like, you know, people who feel responsible for like the earth, we're destroying the earth. It's our earth, we've got to do something about it. And this is, uh, you know, this, it, it, I think, well, I'm asking you, does it literally take everything into itself as, have, as being it? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. What do you mean? So whatever appears, whether it's, uh, you know, I own this property or... Um... More or less. I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, one could say experiencing is already kind of owning. This is what I experience now. This is my experience now. In a, in a, in a broader sense, this could be regarded as owning already. This is my life. What I'm aware of is my life. This is what I, where I can play in, so to speak. In that sense, yes, awareness, being aware of, is already some kind of owning. Yeah. And so, for example, if there was a person who um, was sharing this message in the content, but they still felt separate inside, but they thought they'd become no one, um, there would be a subtle sense of these are my meetings. I oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Whereas and versus, I'm doing them and they would help someone. Whereas for you, well, not for you, but in this case, there's no one there who would think, oh, this is my meeting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it isn't. It completely and that, isn't. That takes up the responsibility. It's my meeting. I've got to do something about it or do it right or... Yeah, there's no doing this right. Yeah. <laughs> But there's no doing it wrong either. Oh yeah, of course. There's no so, doing it. Freedom. <laughs> okay, question. Doesn't the consequence of experience rely on the belief in time? Well, yeah, they just go together. It's not really the uh, it's not really the belief in time. The mere experience of presence is the invention of the experience of time. For the person, time is not just a concept. The person can understand that the time on the clock is a concept, but it experiences itself in time as if it's there now and as if something is happening. And that automatically goes together with, with self-awareness. I'm now here. Well, that's time. So yes, they belong together. Can't be separated. As I say, the person can, can understand that time is relative and therefore kind of conceptual, the idea of clock. But same with space. It just but it's just really a belief, is it? Again? not a belief it's an experience of time that's the thing yes it experiences that something is going on it's an emb most embodied almost absolutely oh yeah 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 that's why you can logically understand that there is no time or not logically but you can sort of see there is no time but it's still not the same thing so yeah, exactly, like, but because this seeing would happen in time. Yeah, it's like a pull. A pull? Oh, a pull. Yes, it, as I said, it just feels like that. And it can play with the concept of time not being real. Like time is relative. Sometimes five minutes feel like half an hour. Sometimes half an hour passes like this. And it and it's, can be kind of fascinated with those ideas. But every inquiry, every conclusion into that would happen here now for me. So it would still be just experienced in time. 
That's why all those, I mean, that's the funny thing. The, the, this would be, for example, all those methods to become, to make obvious that time isn't real. And so you play around with this, with those ideas and you have to ask yourself, yeah, sometimes it's relative and stuff like that, but it would all just happen for someone in time. It's useless, it's just useless any kind of inquiry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A question. The contradiction with some teachings is an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement of there being no free will and no doer. Yes, that's what I just talked about. And yet they suggest the seeker can do things, however subtle those things might seem. Yes. That, I mean, what, what often happens, especially with this non, not especially, but there you can point it out easy, with non-duality or Advaita, is dancing around those concepts. And of course, it's also dancing around, for example, there not being a doer. And then, for example, you are asked to look back on your life to hopefully see that you didn't decide anything. And the person can look back and somehow see that there was a lot of things it didn't decide. And then there is this, oh yeah, true, I didn't decide. Same with the time what we were just speaking about, but it's all dancing around those concepts and somehow bringing conclusions. And the person gets, the, gets almost a sense of, yeah, I feel it true. There isn't a doer really, or yeah, time is relative, but it would all happen for someone who did do the inquiry in the first place and who has the experience to come to a conclusion. In that sense, there is no teaching here at all. There is no suggestion for you to have a look. There is no trying to convince you to make this obvious for you. This would all be dream stuff. It won't be seen, it won't be experienced. What we speak about is not the person suddenly seeing all of it or suddenly knowing all of it. And also in that sense, there is no connection to those teachings who are maybe <laughs> probably well meant, <laughs> but just coming from a personal position and somehow trying to play with those concepts and to find truth in those concepts. And it's almost the desperate attempt to make the person convinced that it is like that, that there is no one, that there is no time, that there is no space, hoping that one can finally get it or understand it. Never happens, it always remains on a path, on a path of insights, conclusions, understandings, which are all apparent. Can you logically explain no time? Oh, no. No, because no time is not a circumstance. It's not another, another state in time. Timelessness isn't something which is now here as something that can be known or explained. No, no. I mean, there is no logical explanation for anything anyway, because there just isn't anything really there. <laughs> so, Maybe for logical explanations, I'm the wrong person to talk to. <laughs> Though sometimes I'm not bad in giving the impression of logic. <laughs> Andreas, so to say that before I came to these meetings, I felt a certain way, and now I'm feeling a different way, and that's better, is just basically a load of rubbish. Uh, no, it's it's it may be what seems to be happening, but it would be empty and for no one. Even so the, better, maybe you do feel better. <laughs> that's all right. That's apparently possible, but it's of no use for anyone, and it doesn't and, to be of any use. It would just be what seems to be happening. And because in your case, so so to speak. Now that there's absolutely no sense, well, there's no center anywhere, but now that, that there's no one taking ownership or whatever, 
if, if you feel better compared to when you were a Sikh or whatever, that would need someone to know that that really happened for it to be of a real consequence or a real difference. Uh, so to speak, yes. So when there's no longer knowing or experiencing, whatever's apparently changed is of no real consequence because there's no one to yes. be yeah. affected. Yeah. Consequences, so to speak, are part of the dream in that sense. I mean, the person would always, I mean, the person would always ask, what's the consequence for me? Okay, 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 I feel better. So what does this mean for me and my being on a path? Oh, I feel bad today. What does this feel to me? Uh, what does this mean to me? What's the consequence for me as a person, so to speak? And that illusion drops. In that sense, there is no consequence of anything. And it would also assume because like, there's no need for those changes to happen exactly that's the other thing the the person needs changes it hopes for change to some extent because every change might be the new or might promise to bring about something and so when there's no longer the sense of someone there there's nothing no need, yeah nothing needs to change absolutely because there's no need to bring about a new state or a new this or that. Exactly. Yes. I mean, the person would always say, this isn't it. The person's instantaneous experience is, this can't be it. So for this to become it, something needs to change. Whatever it is, but the, it's almost seen from the person, that's the, that's the only thing that seems to be clear because it's clear that this isn't it. So whatever fulfillment looks like, it must be different. That's why it's always, that's why it's always attentive and checking out and see, did something change? And did this change bring about something? Oh, now there's happiness. Maybe this means something. Oh, there's something else happening. Maybe this brings something. So it's constantly attentive and hungering for change, so to speak. Hungering is a great word. I because... think it's for the first time. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is, so like, because the sense of me, so you're saying the experience of me is that this isn't it. Even when it's having a joyous experience of getting what it thinks it wants, certainly in the background, it's like, well, this is going to end. Uh, so to speak, it's maybe a very good sign to be on the right path but it's pretty quickly embedded into a bigger story and just turned into another something that happens now. Absolutely. No so matter how good it is, it's still not everything. Right. That's the, yeah. No matter how good it is, it's not everything. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's still only something that happens now. And there's also a fear of that good experience being taken away. Well, for example, yes. So yeah. it would never enjoy a hundred percent unless it's unless the me's not well. Yeah, one could say so. Well, yeah, exactly. Not when there isn't anyone that there is hundred percent enjoyment, so to speak. But exactly, uh, as long as there is someone, there is separation going on, and in that sense, it's never really total. Because for this... it to be total, the person would need to die so to speak it's a story but yeah no i can remember like this might sound weird but i remember like if i'm eating a really sometimes it's happened i'm eating a really 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 good meal and i'm thinking this is gorgeous this is perfect i can't wait till the next time i eat this and i'm only halfway through it so i'm still actually eating it i was thinking i can't wait till next week when i eat this again or whatever and it's because it knows that it can't hold on to that it thinks i'm getting some satisfaction and that oh, sense yeah. of i'm getting satisfaction is the dreams yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a hope. It's rather a hope that this act, while it happens, that it actually gives satisfaction. It never really happens. It's just circling around within the dream. Hoping so that the goodness of the meal actually gives me something. 
adds but it's still, to my life quality. So but it will still need more. Even if the goodness of the meal gives me something, there still needs to be more, like I need to have it again next week or... For example, or you try to enjoy it more while you eat it. Maybe you don't think about next week, but you want to really consciously eat the meal in order to get most uh, fulfillment out of it, for example. Again, there can be many strategies. So don't actually, think about next time. Just eat it totally. <laughs> it's the, the same way of eating. <laughs> the same I, separation. I'm not that present. But the thing is, so even the teachings of consciousness uh, about having your attention really focused and being really conscious and present is about getting the most fulfillment. Like It's almost like squeezing fulfillment out of something. Absolutely. The moment called the moment. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's again the person saying in a way the answer to seeking is me. So I'm present. But what might fulfill me is to be more present. I'm aware, but what might fulfill me is more awareness. I'm disciplined meditation, so the answer might be more meditation. And same with presence. It's taking its own experience that's already there and, and hopes that more of it might bring fulfillment. And of course, all those ideas about experiencing and I mean, that's that's basically what's around these days that experiencing itself is what might be fulfillment. So you have an adventurous life, travel around the whole world is all the attempt to try to fill up one's life. Yeah. So, so as much as I asked you on the weekend that surrender, acceptance, letting go is a form of control, being present is a form of control because it's trying to control getting um, really um, getting something ultimately. Well, kind of. They just go together. Whenever there is the sense to be someone, there is some kind of control. Oh, no, I meant being present as a practice, like a conscious practice. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Every practice is controlling because you want to control, control your joy and your luck. That's it. And it control. And it's the belief that this leads to a real outcome. Well, of course. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, question. So I means concepts, not life. Yeah. Yeah, concepts would be a bit superficial. But, but I mean, I is just living in a world. It's just living as an I <laughs> in this separate energetic reality, apparently. And this would include to live in concepts, ideas. Yeah, but this would already be a symptom kind of of separation. An apparent symptom, of course. Okay, if you speak about happening, you create time because happening is unconceivable without time. Yes, that's why I usually say that's what apparently happens. Only if I get really lazy, I say happening. But yes, there's just what seems to be happening, okay. which is not a happening. Yeah. Yeah. But the funny thing is, even if I say happening, this doesn't create time, but it would create the idea of time in the seeker's experience. <laughs> that was good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> more, more. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, I'm, some, I know some. Oh, these things I'm asking you. I, I didn't mean especially. Yes, sorry. I know some of these things I ask you might. Well, they. I was going to say they sound obvious. They probably don't sound obvious to you because you don't know it. But um, I forgot what I was going to ask now. Sorry, I've gone totally blank. Uh, 
<laughs> come back. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a totally all right, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm joking. Ah, I remember what my question was. My question was the idea that there could be fulfillment anywhere is rubbish. Because the me will go from one thing to the next. So, like, it'll think, okay, maybe fulfillment's there. So, if I do a lot of that, I'll get fulfillment. Okay, that didn't bring fulfillment. Maybe fulfillment's there. I'll do a lot of that. Maybe that'll bring fulfillment. But and the dream is that there is fulfillment anywhere. Uh, yeah. not, on, not with you in that body. There's not fulfillment in that body. Yes, there's not fulfillment in being present, no matter in which circumstances you believe to be present. Ah, I'm at the cinema. Maybe this gives something. Ah, I'm doing meditation. Maybe this gives me something. And usually, it's seen from the person, it's regarded as development. Changing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah, used, of course. Oh, yeah, of I course. used to go out and drink every night. Now I meditate every day. Or... Exactly, exactly. Yes. Even the healthy lifestyle thing then, like... I mean, it's great for the body getting in shape and stuff, but it's still a dream that you're making progress. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, or that this progress means something for you, that you as a me progress on your path towards fulfillment. It never happens. It's a dream. It never happens. And that's why you say there's no answer, because the, the me thinks, oh, there wasn't filming in that, maybe it was filming that. It's basically saying maybe that was the answer. Okay, it wasn't. This might be the exactly. answer. I mean, usually the person would just feel, yeah, it wasn't the right thing, or I wasn't good enough, or I'm just not there yet, or I'm just not as clear as Andreas, or I'm just not as whatever. But the, so the person would, would, would turn itself wrong. That's again where, where it just feels like, well, I'm not there yet. And the dream is that there is fulfillment that can be found somewhere. Exactly. It's the only thing that the person can process in a way. It's not really conceptual, it just feels like that. Out of this sense of unfulfillment, there is it's almost desperate. Like, well, it has to be somewhere. There has to be something within this real world that I'm experiencing, which has to fulfill me. Sorry, it has to be like that, because otherwise it would be really wrong. There would be no way out. I would be desperate, I would be suffering all the time. This can't be it, sorry. This so can't the, be it. So the person seeking fulfillment completely makes sense and could is understandable because- Oh, absolutely. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. And within its experience, there's nothing else that it could do. Oh, I don't see it as wrong. That's amazing. There's nothing else it could do but look for fulfillment. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else it can do but seek for. So when you think, um, oh, in the past I thought I'm seeking fulfillment. I should stop. <laughs> I'm not going to find it. But like, it's the only thing it can do. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's no answer. There's nothing wrong with anything. Everything is what it is. But there's nothing wrong with anything. Absolutely. Andreas, I just feel like you're absolutely smashing it today. And it might just be that I'm actually listening for once. <laughs> Maybe you oh. smash it every... <laughs> All right. Okay, there are quite a few questions. Okay, time, like many other theories taught to us, is still only a theory. Yes a questionable method of measuring reality. Uh, yes. Childhood seems to be just fine without it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Everything seems to go along quite well without knowing what time is. <clears throat> okay, if there is an energy of separation, does it mean there are apparently different energies? Well, not not really. I mean, that's a, that's the funny thing. It's it's actually 
a, a, a try an attempt to describe something which doesn't really exist. So the person would describe itself as presence, awareness, this sense of I'm here, but in the end, exactly that is the illusion. So there aren't really different energies. It's a story. But yeah, when you say apparently different energies, yeah. I mean, the problem is when you say that there are apparently different energy, <laughs> it still sounds as if it's real to some degree, but it never is. Question. <clears throat> Somehow in this dream, personal story, some gradual deconstruction of personality, losing preferences, desires, emotional investment can be witnessed. Is it just another dream of the being? Well, yes and no. On the one hand, it's what seems to be happening. So it's just wholeness as that. But as long as there is a person, the person will turn it into a personal story as this is as if this is something that's real and as if it's happening to me and that it might say something about me i'm progressing for example or i'm whatever the story might be and that would be the dream so to speak but it's possible that preferences drop away or desires or investment and stuff of course uh, but in the end it wouldn't happen to anyone in the story maybe at one point the one who witnesses becomes deconstructed as well but don't wait for this to be witnessed. Andreas, one of the fears that I always have is missing out. So I think I'm doing this, but I could be doing something else that would bring me more fulfillment. So I'm missing out. Well, that's always the danger that you do it wrong and that you could do something that's better. And also the, the dream is that something has more value than something, or, or you could miss out on something, like you could get something from something. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they go together, yeah. I mean, you don't get anything here, so. Oh no, I don't feel like I'm wasting time here. This is progress. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one useful hour of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams are my real, okay. Statements like there is no time seem to be very philosophical. If it's not a philosophy, I don't know what to do with this message. Any comments on that? Oh, yes, absolutely. As seen from the person, this is philosophy or abstract knowledge, or if you want to have it wholly, some people would say the highest knowledge, which I will never reach or something. Yes, yeah. The person has no clue what's being spoken about here. It's much more direct. It's not philosophy, but the only thing the person would end up with is, believe it or not. When I say there is no one, the person could just say, okay, I don't know. Maybe he's right. Maybe not. I will never know. Yes. I did a, um, a course once where there were about 230 people sitting in the room listening to this. Um, I'm going to use the word cautiously, this guru on the stage talking to us. And I, when I was when I attended it, I was a teacher at the time. And I remember sitting there thinking, ah, he's a really good teacher. And the guy sitting next to me was uh, was a coach and he said, ah, he's a really good coach. And then as basically you realize that whoever you talk to, depending on what their job was, they they thought he was, you know, they, they turned it into something else. 
and uh, yeah, there's, that's not a question, Andreas. There's nowhere to go with that. That's yeah. um, just purely a straightforward um, observation, apparently. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. The separated existence, it's often there because the person cannot find his place in the whole. Once he finds where he belongs and what is his world occupation missing, he might lose this sense of separation. Do you agree? No, no, I don't, no, no. It would just give the impression for a while to be on a good path. Yeah, because in a, in a way the person would constantly need to reposition itself or it might happen like that. No. So no, this is not about finding one's position or that's a hope of the person. If I find the job that fulfills me, if I find the right partner, if I know my mission, stuff like that, then this will fulfill me or yes, but no. No, it won't. <clears throat> but apparently when there is the illusion of, hey, now I found my place, then it might feel better because the person thinks I'm on the right path now. <clears throat> Hello. <clears throat> And it's what it's not really. I would put it the other way around. So the separated existence, it's not there, uh, isn't there because the person can't find its place. The whole idea that I need to find a place is rather a symptom of being separate than the cause of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Andreas, hello. Hello. Uh, Adriana here. Hi. Um, hi. So yet all of these things are always, uh, anyway, just happening apparently. In the search, uh, everything, everything. Yes. So it's like there is, <laughs> there is no difference. Uh, yes. Yeah. The only difference would be like the way I mean you, Andreas, no. You can tell us, is there, is there um, a different way to relate to other people? Like uh, when they say, yeah, this is like that, you know, is there something in Andreas that says, no, no, it's not like that. Or, oh yes, it's, it's, yeah, I agree. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or that if that happened, it's also happening apparently. Yes, of course, this would just be what apparently happens. There is no real relating to people. There are no people. I don't relate. <laughs> there is no one to do so. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Relating, you know, that's a, bit, that's a bit difficult. Relating is what apparently happens, but not as an experience of relating. Or the person would regard as relationship or relating is to have the experience to be someone and to relate to a separate thing. Mm, yeah. That's a complete dream. And that, in that sense, that's not happening here. Yet yeah, we, we can think, uh, the I thinks uh, I am doing, uh, I am taking a decision or I am saying this or I'm going with, uh, somewhere or not going and and yet no one is taking that decision yes one could say so yes because the sense the illusory sense to be i is already not done by anyone 
and there isn't anything that decides or chooses what this illusion of I thinks or feels or believes. That would be another dream of the person that I decide how I am, how I feel, what I'm longing for. But this too already is what seems to be happening. No one does that. Mm. So uh, what uh, we, I mean, I heard a lot is like uh, uh, everything is perfect as it is, right? Uh, I mean, in a normal <laughs> conversation or you know even schools of uh, spiritual schools like everything is perfect would mean exactly like that like everything is as it is and no one is taking any decision so everything is perfect because no one is taking a decision uh, because no one's there to experience it as imperfect or perfect or perfect exactly that's why perfection is often a bit turned yeah. into goodness or something but it's blindly perfect it's natural that, yeah that's what i meant yes yeah oh absolutely yeah it's automatic because the yeah. only thing which operates in the in the in the story of perfect or imperfect perfect or imperfect is illusory right so nothing knows what perfection is and nothing knows what imperfection is that why, that's why it works. <laughs> that's why it's naturally perfect. Right. So every, uh, it's like we can stop worrying about, you know, whatever decisions we make because whatever decisions are there uh, are not taken by, by a me. Uh, absolutely. But the attempt to stop worrying because of might be another hope. But yes, there's no need to worry. Worry is not needed, yeah. But even that hope, isn't that something that is apparently happening? If it would be what happens, it would just be what apparently happens, of course, yeah. Actually. What do you mean if it would be what happens? Well, it doesn't need to happen. But yeah, if there is... Uh, the okay, happen, okay. That's what seems yeah. to be happening. Not because it needs to happen or because it's right. It would just be what happens, but not because of something. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Exactly. Joey asks, how? How could you stop? Yes, that's the thing. There is no real conclusion from this message. A person would always hope, oh, so I could just stop worrying. But yes, theoretically, yes. There is no need to worry about anything. There is nothing to worry about. But you trying to not worry again might become another prison. Because if worrying would stop, it wouldn't be because of you stopping it. Yes. Yeah, that's, it's like, you know, sometimes it's said that, oh, well, everything is, it's already whole as it is. And there is no one. So everything is fine. Yes, true, but not for me. Uh, so to speak, yes. Yeah. Yes. And there Tell are that to me. Yes. And there are a lot of teachings which, which suggest, well, you can relax because it's not in your hands anyway. Which is kind of true, but not really what this message suggests, that you should relax or that that's the underlying goal or something. Yeah. But there's no need for stress. <laughs> or seeking. Oh, there's a quote from the Bible. I have, a most joyful experience is emptiness. Knowing what you don't know is not the liberation. No birth, no death. Yes. Yeah, there is no knowledge. There is no birth. There's no death. But there's also no experience. But yes, wanting and trying not wanting are the same hell. Yes, apparently. It's just wanting. I think there's yeah, a lot of people busy with trying to not want things. 
Oh, it's also a very religious idea. I mean, the thing is that it's also quite logical. Of course, the person can totally understand. Well, if I wouldn't want all those things, I would be happy. Yeah, of course, that's true. But <laughs> there isn't anyone in the first place doing the wanting. I would say the one thing may be even more natural than trying not to want, because at least it's like, well, you're not getting yeah, it. Yeah, I know what you mean, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's just trying another, another way. <laughs> well, all right. <sighs> I think that's about it. There is no message. There's no teaching. There's nothing to do or not to do. Or basically there just isn't anyone already doing or not doing anything. What happens, what seems to be happening is just everything. And it's naturally and blindly perfect. It just has no clue about perfection. That's why it's unconditionally perfect. It's this. There's just this for no one. Thank you very much for joining. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you, Andreas. Thank, you. Thank you, Andreas. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Andreas. Bye. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.